So I had a number of options of uh, games to play. Um, I've gone on kind of a space game buying spree, Imperium, well, science fiction, time agent, throne world, and this High Frontier. Um, it's a Phil Ackland game that I actually bought on recommendations uh, from people who saw my other videos, especially Lords of Sierra Madre and uh, uh, I think Age of Exploration, actually. Um, it's an interesting game. Uh, one of the first things to look at is the board, which is just crazy looking to me. It looks like it's a route uh, finding game to a large extent. There trying to figure out how to best exploit resources which are main at the beginning of hers to be mainly water in order to uh, launch spacecraft on potentially valuable routes and then exploit the resources that you find uh, there's some bidding on these patents um, which are additional tools that allow you to make an easier to have an easier time uh, in, in, in performing the goals you want to make. I notice a couple of things right away that kind of bug me. Um, one is the route finding part about it is I think going to reduce the enjoyment in a number of ways. One, I find that a kind of disturbing thing, especially in a solo game, but in general, uh, to try to find the best route between you know, where I am in my objective or potential objectives to try to maximize whatever my gain is. Another is more of a, a realism issue. Uh, now, maybe the expanded game, which I've got ordered, uh, takes care of this to some extent, I think, but everything looks fixed. Um, this is something that Battlefleet Mars, great SPI game, uh, took care of which is that the planets are moving at different rates. And uh, here we have, you know, for example, Earth is sitting here. Venus is over here. And it's a fixed distance away. Now, these may indicate some kind of optimal launch periods expectable in a year or something along those lines. I'm not sure what... Uh, it's not clear in... The, so far, my reading of the rules. Now, I haven't gotten into, uh, you know, all the detailed information. This is a, a fairly large rule book, most of which is not rules. Um, got seven pages of base rules here. Another couple pages for the expanded game, covering politics, which would be interesting. And then here, from page 12... 23 or so is explanations of the technologies. There's a lot of dense uh, information covered in little sidebars. It's possible that that, uh, that information is here. It's not in the, uh, the base rules. It may be in the background section. I haven't read that yet. Um, but yeah, in general, and I probably should, I see tips for inexperienced rocket cadets, and that's definitely what I am. I think that'll. I think this page will be where where it's covered if it's not covered elsewhere. Um, but yeah, in general, this is a topic, and it really is about you know rocket science um, that I haven't had a lot of interest in, and I, I haven't had uh, certainly haven't any knowledge of, to tell you the truth. Uh, let me go over some of the base goals as far as I can tell from the game. It's a victory point collection game. You get points for um, having factories, uh, exploiting resources directly in terms of you've got a claim somewhere that you're working. Uh, also setting up minor colonies, etc., which don't seem to be worth much. Um, there's some major space ventures. Uh, which appear to be claims and operation of uh, particular types of factories 
that you'd be running. Um, you also can get points in glory. And those come from uh, from reaching certain objectives. Uh, you get points per factory for how rare those factories are in the game. Um, so the more people have factories of that type, the less each factory becomes worth. You can upgrade your, your technology, these cards here, by flipping them over based on having a factory that produces a particular good. Uh, basically, each player is allowed to do one sort of, well, first are allowed to uh, operate their spacecraft if they have one on the board. And then they can do one thing. And some of those things are launching stuff into space or doing research and uh, setting up uh, an industry. But yeah, uh, you get to do one kind of meta action each turn and you get to run, uh, run the spacecraft uh, that you have. And if you have freighters on the board, I think they move at the same time. Um, the rules for flying the spacecraft are very, very detailed in terms of uh, use this whole chart set up here based on the dry weight and the wet weight, uh, basically everything that's on board the ship, uh, versus uh, you know the paths that you're following, different paths have different requirements in terms of the, the gravitational fields you have to pull out of. Um, changing direction, etc. is difficult. That's all handled through these uh, little paths that you see on the board. And the colored ones are just particularly, uh, I don't know, flagged paths that the value has been calculated already on a signpost to tell you what you're going to need to get from basically Earth to somewhere else that's considered particularly valuable. But there's a lot of stuff that there aren't routes planned out for um, that looks pretty valuable, especially if you have uh, certain mining technologies like right in here with the, uh, with the ray gun or whatever it is. Um, you could collect a lot of, uh, a lot of sites with that. Um, it's going to be a really tough game to figure out how to use this map right. It kind of reminds me of uh, Merchant of Venus in that sense, that being able to understand what the map says requires some study. On the bright side, different from Merchant from Ve of Venus, in this case, the map is fixed. <laughs> Without the, op without the additional roll. Uh, the expansion, I think, mutates that a little bit. Um, makes certain areas go in and out of play, essentially, because of the time of year or whatever. But, uh, or the particular year that it is, just the cycles of the planets. I think that's taken care account uh, in the expanded rules. I'm not positive how well that, how, how good that feels. Um... So, those fixed routes mean that once you, if you have an excitement in discovering routes, uh, you're going to very quickly find the paths, and that excitement, I think, is going to go away largely. For me, there's something of a, a pleasure in it because I don't really like finding routes. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I, I look at that as kind of the bright side of it. Um, you, win, you end the game when a certain amount of factories are built, basically. And players have the option to spend money to force the game to end quicker. Um, each player, country, whatever, uh, has its own special powers, which uh, combine to both kind of political economic powers and also... Uh, equipment that their crew starts out with. So in I'm only playing with four. There's actually five players. The fifth one's over here, and they're kind of cool. They have a the ray gun thing. But uh, they're ugly orange, and I did completely randomize to see who would be left out. Uh, 
one of the other cool players is the Chinese. They're allowed to, they're the only ones I think allowed to commit crimes, which I think is kind of cool. Um, they can do claim jumping and space their crew and stuff like that. Uh, and the UN is able to tax, they get extra water whenever somebody establishes uh, a base or or lifts anything into the atmosphere. Um, this is, I think, the EU, essentially. Um, they've got a good source of free power, and that may work into some of these cards as well, where they're able to power up other people's stuff as, in addition. Um, yeah, NASA gets money every time somebody boosts into space. This uh, research conglomerate has bonuses in getting patents. It looks like it's going to be interesting. Um, I'm not sure, for me, it's going to be worth the amount of money that it costs for the amount of pleasure I'm going to get. I did order the expansion, too, so we're talking over 60 bucks for... Uh, something that I don't know how much play value I'm going to get out of, but I'm approaching it with an open mind here. Uh, yeah, really. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, it may be a lot of fun. It really may be. Uh, but it isn't really the type of game that I usually am most drawn to. It doesn't appear to have that much politics in it. It doesn't appear to have uh, the stock manipulation that I like in an economic game. It doesn't seem to have a lot of military aspect. So it's hard for me to say. Um, it got a lot of buzz last year. Uh, it's at least one of the cons. Um, but then again, the, the design crew introduced it, etc. And they, have, they give the script for that. But you know... Having someone explain it might be helpful uh, comparatively. To The rules were very difficult to wade through um, for their short length. And really kind of just understanding what's going on here. Because uh, in some ways the rules kind of read more like, not the rules themselves, but a lot of the, the documentation that went up. I feel more like I'm reading somebody's research paper than I'm reading a, a rule book with some kind of nice introductory material to get me into to the feel of it. And in some ways, you almost have to because the concepts behind the movement here are so weird. Uh, they're, they're so counterintuitive to what you would expect when you're looking uh, at, at, at any kind of, uh, at most other movement in games. Um, so we'll see.